Monkey Houses is a great game with a very interesting cast of characters. They all have unique personalities and abilities, so I decided to do my best to adapt these characters in the D&D 5th edition. So if you ever wanted to roleplay as Lauren's Hellman Gloucester, now is your chance. Before we start, I just wanted to lay down the rules. Number one, no homebrew. This will be done using official D&D 5e content only to make it more universal as not all DMs allow homebrew. Number two, character builds will start at level three. As level three is when most classes get subclasses, it makes sense to start them there. Rule number three, we will be using point by for stats because rolling is lame, die mad. And number four, Forgotten Realms content only. This is because Forgotten Realms is the default setting for D&D 5e, so it makes sense to restrict it to only that. Builds will be based on the character's talents and quote-unquote canon building game. A lot of this is opinion-based, since Three Houses allows you to have any character as any class, and some abilities in Three Houses don't translate well to D&D, so some of it will be a stretch. Oh, and I'm going to spoil a lot about all of the characters, so if you haven't played Golden Deer, maybe sit this one out. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Claude is the leader of Golden Deer, so let's start with him. So Claude is a halfling ranger. Wait, 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 don't click off the video, I can explain. Claude's specialty class, the Barbarossa, involves him riding on a wyvern. There's no way to recreate this for humans at level 3. But, if we play as a small creature, Beastmaster, we can choose the Pterodon Companion at level 3 and snipe people from the sky. So Claude will be a Lightfoot Halfling, which gives him bonuses to Dax and Charisma, which I feel like is appropriate for Claude's character. And for class, he's a Beastmaster Ranger with the aforementioned Pterodon. Favorite enemy doesn't matter, there's no Fire Emblem equivalent. Favorite terrain can be coast or mountains, as Almira has... A mountain range and a coastline and fighting style is archery of course spells are tricky since claude isn't exactly a caster but i decided to go with hail of thorns to represent his fell star weapon art hunter's mark to represent his accurate attacks and intuition and detect poison and disease to represent his poison and disease skills well not disease skills poison skills when it comes to his schemes involving poisoning people for stats i decided to go with a 10 in strength a 16 in Dex, a 10 in Con, a 12 in Intelligence, a 14 in Wisdom, and a 14 in Charisma. I decided to lay out the stats this way because even though he has higher strength in game, strength and Dex don't work the same way as they do in D&D, and I feel like if Claude were in D&D, he'd be more of a Dex character considering that he's an Archer. Um, a 10 in Con, a 12 in Intelligence to represent his foresight, thoughts during his schemes, and his tactical mind, they call him the Master Tacticians after all. A 14 in Wisdom to represent his street smarts and intuition he got from growing up as an outsider in both Fodlin and Almira. And a 14 in Charisma to represent his leadership skill and the fact that he's super charismatic. I went with the Far Traveler background to represent his outsider attitude and feeling like he doesn't belong in both Fodlin and Almira. And a good plot hook for him is that he seems like a traveler who coincidentally got himself wrapped up in the plot, but he's later revealed to be a noble from a foreign land who intentionally got themselves involved. And for proficiencies, we'll go with animal handling to control your wyvern, athletics to do sw sick upside-down quickscopes, nature to find poison for your schemes, and dragon chess to practice your tactical mind. Finally, for equipment, you can go with scale mail or leather armor, it really doesn't matter. Pack doesn't matter. Two simple weapons, hand axe and spear, because he uses axes and lances in game, and a flute. It doesn't mean anything, it's just funny to think of Claude running around with a flute, annoying other members of Golden Deer House. It's Claude's loyal and lazy retainer, Hilda. Hilda, unlike Claude, is a human. A variant human, to be specific. Take the heavy armor master feat to reflect Hilda's high defense, and for class, pick fighter. There are three fighting styles that I think fit, but for this build, we're gonna take defense to reflect her high defense in game. And for subclass, we'll pick battle master, because there are some maneuvers that I think really reflect Hilda's personality. For maneuvers, we'll take commanding strike, because Hilda constantly gets others to do her work for her. Rally, because Hilda is very charismatic and motivational, and goading attack, because I feel like shouting Hilda, 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 
Every time you kill someone's companion will make them want to attack you. For stats, we'll go with a 16 in strength, an 8 in dex, a 16 in con, a 10 in intelligence, an 8 in wisdom, and a 14 in charisma. I went with a 16 in strength because she's swole, of course. 8 in dex because she's not very dexterous and all that heavy armor of hers. 16 in con because she's very tanky. 10 in intelligence because she seems to be about average intelligence when she applies herself. And 8 in wisdom because she doesn't have a lot of practical acquired knowledge. And a 14 in charisma because she is very charismatic. For background, we'll take Noble because she's a noble, duh. And for plot hook, is she's tired of her overbearing brother. So she lazily travels the world in a tourist sort of way and ends up getting caught up in the plot and has to use her charisma and strength to get out of it. For proficiencies, we'll take athletics because she's strong. Insight because she lies to people so she'd know when people are lying to her her history because that would be covered in being a noble and also i'm pretty sure you have to take it and persuasion because she's very persuasive and for the student of war battle master bonus proficiency we'll take woodcarver's tools because she's shown as making jewelry frequently and instead of jeweler's tools i went with woodcarver's because i don't believe she ever mentions gems and her jewelry seems to be more um like wood stuff with flowers and stuff and you also get a game set but that doesn't really matter for equipment we'll take two hand axes chain mail a great axe and a glaive because hilda loves her axes this goes hard in the paint ignatz ignatz is a variant human with a sharpshooter feet which i feel reflects both his high accuracy and high crit rate in game i decided to go with class rogue subclass assassin because a very popular class selection from in fire emblem is that of the assassin assassin class. If you feel that the title of assassin, a hardened killer, is too rough for such a kind boy, thief is also a good selection. For stats, I went with a strength of 10, a dex of 16, a con of 14, an int of 14, a wisdom of 10, and a charisma of 10. I went with these stats because in-game, Ignatz mainly just has speed and luck stat, which aren't a thing in D&D. So I went with a high dex, a decent con, a decent intelligence, and really middle of the road for everything else. Um, con was to give him bonus survivability, and intelligence is because in-game he's a nerd, so I feel like he'd have an above average intellect. For background, we'll go with Guild Artisan, variant Guild Merchant. A good plot hook is that he's forced to pursue knighthood by his father. And he became a squire for either a knight NPC or a PC if you have one in the party. For proficiencies, we'll take acrobatics, sleight of hand, stealth, with an expertise in that, investigation, history, thieves, tools, and painter supplies. I feel like all of these are obvious. Acrobatics to be agile, sleight of hand to steal stuff, stealth to sneak, investigation to snoop around, history because he's a nerd, thieves tools to open chests, and painter supplies because he loves painting. And lastly, for equipment, we'll go with shortbow, painter supplies, any pack, and a rapier. It's the worst member of Golden Deer House, Leone. She's so bad, in fact, that I didn't even put her in the thumbnail. Leone is a variant human with the mounted combatant feet. This is because, um, no matter what class you go with with Leone, you're most likely gonna either go Bow Knight, Holy Knight, Dark Knight, some kind of knight, something on a horse, mountain combatant. For stats, I went with a 16 in strength, a 14 in dex, a 12 in con, a 12 in int, a 12 in wisdom, and an 8 in charisma. I went with a 16 in strength for, to um, improve her lance usage, a 14 in dex to improve her bow usage, because she's most likely a bow knight in your game, a 12 in con to, to improve her hardiness, 12 in int, she seems average intelligence, 12 in wisdom, average wisdom, 8 in charisma because she's incredibly unlikable. I went with class fighter, subclass cavalier, with the archery fighting style. This is based off of the Bow Knight class. You get all these nice features for being on a horse. Hopefully in your campaign you'll have a horse and you'll be on one. Because if not, you're screwed. With background, I went with Folk Hero because... Leone was born in a small town and they all pooled their money so she could go to Garigmok. A good plot hook is that she had a lifelong obsession with an adventurer, a mercenary perhaps, who visited her village when she was a kid, and now that she's older, she wants to sit out into the world and become an adventurer herself. Her proficiencies take athletics, animal handling, perception, nature, survival, and insight. Her tools take anything that would be practical for a villager. In her support, she's shown using cobbler's tools, weaver's tools, pretty much anything. She can fix anything because she had to when she was a kid in her village. 
So pretty much any practical tools will fit for her. And the proficiencies are because these are all things that she'd learn how to do from growing up in a small hunting village. And finally, for equipment, take two hand axes, chain mail, the tools you picked, a longbow, and a lance and or spear. Well, not and or, a lance or a spear. <laughs> is Golden Deer's resident punchy boy, Raphael. Raphael is a variant human with two feats to choose from. Either choose tough or grappler. Tough to show off his tankiness or a grappler to show off his unarmed skills. For class, I decided to go with monk, subclass Kensei. I decided to make Raphael a monk instead of a fighter or a barbarian because unarmed fighting is such a big part of his character and non-monk classes are terrible at it. Taking the Kensei subclass gives Ralph access to the Battle Axe and allows him to use it and punch people as a bonus action. I feel like Kensei Monk is the best way to adapt Raphael to Dungeons and Dragons. For your Kensei weapons, you'll take Battle Axe and Hand Axe. For stats, we'll go with a 16 in Strength, because he's swole, a 14 in Dex, because he's agile and to improve his unarmed armored defense, a 13 in Con, which isn't exactly accurate, but you can improve it with a Feat or an ASI, an 8 in Int, because he's not the smartest boy, a 14 in Wisdom, and a 9 in Charisma. You can improve both his Con and Charisma with an ASI if you wanted to, to make it a little bit more game accurate. Next, for background, I went with the same as Ignatz, Guild Artisan sub, uh, variant, Guild Merchant, because like Ignatz, he's a merchant. And also like Ignatz, his plot hook is either the uh, Squire to a Knight, a successful knight, or an adventure inspiring to be a knight. Unlike Ignatz, Raphael actually wants to be a knight, and he's not forced to by his dad. For proficiencies, we'll take Acrobatics, Athletics, Survival, cooks utensils and wood carvers tools acrobatics because he's agile for his size athletics because he's swole survival because he seems like he'd be a survival guy cooks utensils because he loves me and wood carvers tools to make gifts for his sister for starting equipment go with wood carvers tool any pack two hand axes and buy a battle axe as soon as you can now for the noblest of nobles Lorenz Helmin Gloucester. Lorenz is a variant human with the Polar Master or Inspiring Leader feat. Polar Master to improve his lance usage or Inspiring Leader to represent his charisma. I'm gonna go with a 14 in strength and dex to represent his martial skills, a 10 in con because he's not the tankiest, a 16 in intelligence to improve his spell DC, an 8 in wisdom because he doesn't have any street smarts, and a 12 in charisma because after the time skip he becomes really likable. We're going class fighter, subclass eldritch knight to represent the dark knight class and fire emblem. Fire emblem spells are hard to translate to D&D, but in game Lawrence gets a bunch of fire spells and sagit slash sagite, I don't know how it's pronounced which is basically magic missile so for his spells we're going to take fireball any other cantrip burning hands magic missile and chromatic orb chromatic orb can be any damage type if you make it fire it fits more for lauren's but it also gives you versatility the other ones are fire spells which i think capture the spirit of lauren's spells in fire emblem Background is noble, obviously, and a good plot hook is he's a young noble who's looking to prove himself that's the son of a lord who owns part of the lands that the plot takes place in. For proficiencies, we'll take animal handling, because he uses a horse a lot. History, because he's well-studied as a noble. Religion, because his father is very religious, which is revealed in the Golden Deer route. And Dragon Test, because he likes tactical stuff. And if Claude's in the same party, he's going to want to beat him at Dragon Chess. Finally, for equipment, take Light Crossbow, Chainmail, Glaive, and Lance. You can really pick any weapons you like. Lauren's is pretty versatile when it comes to weapons. I just chose these ones because I thought they fit. Crest Waifu Marianne is next. Like the others, bar Claude, she's a variant human. Take the Magic Initiate feat for the Clash Druid. We'll be using this feat to get Marianne's Reason spells. For stats, we're going to take an 8 in Strength, a 16 in Dex, a 10 in Con, an 11 in Intelligence, a 16 in Wisdom, and a 12 in Charisma. I went with these stats because in Fire Emblem, healers and casters mainly just have a Madge stat, which doesn't translate to D&D because there's no like magic stat, it's just your spellcasting modifier. So she had to have some martial prowess, so I decided to go with Dex. To represent her use of Blood Gang, she can use a sword similar to Blood Gang, like some sort of dexterity based weapon. I went with an 8 in strength and a 10 in con to still sort of get that Fire Emblem healer squishiness feel. An 11 in intelligence, because she seems about average intelligence. 
And a 12 in charisma because she's a lovable cinnamon bun. For class, Marianne is a life cleric of any good aligned goddess. For cantrips, take Toll the Dead to represent the dark magic feel of Nosferatu. Sacred Flame to represent the light magic feel of Aura. Produce Flame and Frostbite from your Druid cantrips to represent the elemental spells you have on your reason spell list. And for the spell you get with the druid magic initiate, take speak with animals. Even though in game she can't literally speak with animals, she does a lot. And I think it would be fun if she could literally speak to animals in D&D. For background, we're going to go haunted one to reflect her childhood full of trauma and guilt. For people treating her like a monster because of her crest of the beast and her feeling like she's responsible for the, for the disappearance of her parents. A good plot hook is that she's accused of causing trouble related to the plot because of her curse, quote unquote. You can change the curse since crests aren't a thing. And she has to prove her innocence. For proficiencies, we'll take animal handling, religion, survival, arcana, and investigation. Equipment doesn't matter because healers in Fire Emblem don't really have equipment, so go with whatever you want. Last, but certainly not least, the cake-loving, tactical new Kersel, Lysithia. Lysithia was by far the hardest character to translate, and I'm not sure if this build really does her justice. This list is no homebrew for Gone Realms only, but the best way to translate the character. This list is no homebrew for Gone Realms only, but the best way to translate the character, if your DM allows it, is to have both the aberrant dragon mark and a regular dragon mark with a stiff penalty to con to show her two crestness that shortens her lifespan. If your DM allows you to do that, awesome. But if not, this is the build for you. Lake Marianne, Lysithia is a variant human with the magic initiate feature. But unlike Marianne, Lysithia is a necromancy wizard and her magic initiate class is cleric. What makes Lysithia so hard to translate is the fact that her canon class in game is Gremory, which is a wizard cleric hybrid, and the fact that nearly all of her spells are dark magic, which is severely underrepresented in 5e. So instead of listing every spell to take, I will just list the spells that either have a dark magic aesthetic or spells that have a light magic aesthetic since she does have some light magic spells. The rest of her spell list is entirely preference. For stats, we're going to go with an 8 in strength, a 14 in dex, an 8 in con, a 16 in intelligence, a 14 in wisdom. I decided to give her high mental stats and low physical stats because that's how she is in the game. I did give her a 14 in dex to improve her AC because dex is the god stat in D&D, so she pretty much has to have it, but aside from that I gave her an 8 in strength and con to represent how squishy she is in game, and also to represent that she is fragile because of her dual crestness. For class, she's a necromancy wizard. For her spells, we're gonna take Toll the Dead, Chill Touch, Cause Fear, Ray of Sickness, and Chromatic Orb. And for her magic initiate spells, we're going to take Word of Radiance and Cure Wounds. These are the ones that fit most for Lysithia's abilities in game. The rest of her spells are up to you. Like Marianne, she is the Haunted One background um, due to her being experimented on as a child. And a good plot hook is due to her shortened lifespan, Lysithia has to make the most of every moment. She searches every moment for knowledge, looking for a cure to fix her fragility or at least discover something that will give her a worthwhile legacy. Also Alternatively, she could just be searching for the people who experimented on her because she thinks they'll be able to fix her or just for pure revenge. For her proficiencies, we'll take Arcana, Investigation, Perception, and Religion. And Equipment Doesn't Matter, use Mage Armor and Cantrips instead of Armor and Weapons to, rep to really get that Fire Emblem caster feel. How to make the Golden Deer in Dungeons and Dragons. Thanks for watching my terrible video. If you want to watch other of my terrible, other terrible videos of mine, click right here. Have a great day.